Cornell Law School. UCC, Article 2, Sales. Part 7. Remedies. Paragraph 2701. Remedies for breach of collateral contracts not impaired. Remedies for breach of any obligation or promise collateral or ancillary to a contract for sale are not impaired by the provisions of this article. Paragraph 2702. Seller's remedies on discovery of buyer's insolvency. 1. Where the seller discovers the buyer to be insolvent, he may refuse delivery except for cash including payment for all goods therefore delivered under the contract, and stop delivery under this article. Section 2705. 2. Where the seller discovers that the buyer has received goods on credit while insolvent he may reclaim the goods upon demand made within 10 days after the receipt, but if misrepresentation of solvency has been made to the particular seller in writing within 3 months before delivery the 10 day limitation does not apply. Except as provided in this subsection the seller may not base a right to reclaim goods on the buyer's fraudulent or innocent misrepresentation of solvency or of intent to pay. 3. The seller's right to reclaim under subsection 2 is subject to the rights of a buyer in ordinary course or other good faith purchaser under this article. Section 2403. Successful reclamation of goods excludes all other remedies with respect to them. Paragraph 2703. Seller's remedies in general. Where the buyer wrongfully rejects or revokes acceptance of goods or fails to make a payment due on or before delivery or repudiates with respect to a part or the whole, then with respect to any goods directly affected and, if the breaches of the whole contract, section 2612, then also with respect to the whole undelivered balance, the aggrieved seller may a withhold delivery of such goods, b stop delivery by any bailey as hereafter provided section 2705 c proceed under the next section respecting goods still unidentified to the contract d resell and recover damages as hereafter provided section 2706 e recover damages for non-acceptance section 2708 or in a proper case the price section 2709 f cancel Paragraph 2704. Seller's right to identify goods to the contract notwithstanding breach or to salvage unfinished goods. 1. An aggrieved seller under the preceding section may a. identify to the contract conforming goods not already identified if at the time he learned of the breach they are in his possession or control b. Treat as the subject of resale goods which have demonstrably been intended for the particular contract even though those goods are unfinished. 2. Where the goods are unfinished an aggrieved seller may in the exercise of reasonable commercial judgment for the purposes of avoiding loss and of effective realization either complete the manufacture and wholly identify the goods to the contractor cease manufacture and resell for scrap or salvage value or proceed in any other reasonable manner. Paragraph 2705. Seller's stoppage of delivery in transit or otherwise. 1. The seller may stop delivery of goods in the possession of a carrier or other bailey when he discovers the buyer to be insolvent. Section 2702 and may stop delivery of car load truckload, plane load or larger shipments of express or freight when the buyer repudiates or fails to make a payment due before delivery or if for any other reason the seller has a right to withhold or reclaim the goods. 2. As against such buyer the seller may stop delivery until a. Receipt of the goods by the buyer or b. Acknowledgement to the buyer by any bailey of the goods except a carrier that the bailey holds the goods for the buyer or c. Such acknowledgement to the buyer be a carrier by reshipment or as warehouse man, or d. Negotiation to the buyer of any negotiable document of title covering the goods. 3. A. To stop delivery the seller must so notify as to enable the bailey by reasonable diligence to prevent delivery of the goods. B. After such notification the bailey must hold and deliver the goods according to the directions of the seller but the seller is liable to the bailey for any ensuing charges or damages. C. If a negotiable document of title has been issued for Ghost Bailey is not obliged to obey a notification to stop until surrender of the document. 
D. A carrier who has issued a non-negotiable bill of lading is not obliged to obey a notification to stop received from a person other than the consigner. Paragraph 2706. Sellers resale including contract for resale. 1. Under the conditions stated in section 2703 on seller's remedies, the seller may resell the goods concerned or the undelivered balance thereof. Where the resale is made in good faith and in a commercially reasonable manner the seller may recover the difference between the resale price and the contract price together with any incidental damages allowed under the provisions of this article. Section 2710 but less expenses saved in consequence of the buyer's breach. 2. Except as otherwise provided in subsection 3 or unless otherwise agreed resale may be at public or private sale including sale by way of one or more contracts to sell or of identification to an existing contract of the seller. Sale may be as a unit or in parcels and at any time and place and on any terms but every aspect of the sale including the method, manner, time, place and terms must be commercially reasonable. The resale must be reasonably identified as referring to the broken contract, but it is not necessary that the goods be in existence or that any or all of them have been identified to the contract before the breach. 3. Where the resale is at private sale, the seller must give the buyer reasonable notification of his intention to resell. 4. Where the resale is at public sale, a. Only identified goods can be sold except where there is a recognized market for a public sale of futures and goods of the kind, and b. It must be made at a usual place or market for public sale if one is reasonably available and except in the case of goods which are perishable or threaten to decline in value speedily, the seller must give the buyer reasonable notice of the time and place of the resale, and c. If the goods are not to be within the view of those attending the sale the notification of sale must state the place where the goods are located and provide for their reasonable inspection by prospective bidders, and d. The the seller may buy. 5. A purchaser who buys in good faith at a resale takes the goods free of any rights of the original buyer even though the seller fails to comply with one or more of the requirements of this section. 6. The seller is not accountable to the buyer for any profit made on any resale. A person in the position of a seller, section 2707, or a buyer who has rightfully rejected or justifiably revoked acceptance must account for any excess over the amount of his security interest, as hereinafter defined, subsection 3 of section 2711. Paragraph 2707 person in the position of a seller. 1. A person in the position of a seller includes as against the principal an agent who has paid or become responsible for the price of goods on behalf of his principal or anyone who otherwise holds a security interest or other right in goods similar to that of a seller. 2. A person in the position of a seller may as provided in this article withhold or stop delivery, section 2705, and resell, section 2706, and recover incidental damages, section 2710. Paragraph 2708. Seller's damages for non-acceptance or repudiation. 1. Subject to subsection, 2. And to the provisions of this article with respect to proof of market price, section 2723, the measure of damages for non-acceptance or repudiation by the buyer is the difference between the market price at the time and place for tender and the unpaid contract price together with any incidental damages provided in this article, section 2710 but less expenses saved in consequence of the buyer's breach. 2. If the measure of damages provided in subsection 1 is inadequate to put the seller in as good a position as performance would have done, then the measure of damages is the profit, including reasonable overhead, which the seller would have made from full performance by the buyer, together with any incidental damages provided in this article. Section 2710 due allowance for costs reasonably incurred and due credit for payments or proceeds of resale. Paragraph 2709. Action for the price. 
1. When the buyer fails to pay the price as it becomes due, the seller may recover, together with any incidental damages under the next section, the price a of goods accepted or of conforming goods lost or damaged within a commercially reasonable time after risk of their loss has passed to the buyer, and b of goods identified to the contract if the seller is unable after a reasonable effort to resell them at a reasonable price or the circumstances reasonably indicate that such effort will be unavailing. 2. Where the seller sues for the price, he must hold for the buyer any goods which have been identified to the contract and are still in his control except that if resale becomes possible he may resell them at any time prior to the collection of the judgment. The net proceeds of any such resale must be credited to the buyer and payment of the judgment entitles him to any goods not resold. 3. After the buyer has wrongfully rejected or revoked acceptance of the goods or has failed to make a payment due or has repudiated, Section 2610, a seller who is held not entitled to the price under this section shall nevertheless be awarded damages for non-acceptance under the preceding section. Paragraph 2710. Sellers Incidental Damages Incidental damages to an aggrieved seller include any commercially reasonable charges, expenses or commissions incurred in stopping delivery, in the transportation, care and custody of goods after the buyer's breach, in connection with return or resale of the goods or otherwise resulting from the breach. Paragraph 2711. Buyer's Remedies in General Buyer's security interest in rejected goods. 1. Where the seller fails to make delivery or repudiates or the buyer rightfully rejects or justifiably revokes acceptance then with respect to any goods involved, and with respect to that whole if the breach goes to the whole contract, section 2612, the buyer may cancel and whether or not he has done so may in addition to recovering so much of the price as has been paid a cover and have damages under the next section as to all the goods affected whether or not they have been identified to the contract or b recover damages for non-delivery as provided in this article section 2713 2. Where the seller fails to deliver or repudiates the buyer may also a. If the goods have been identified recover them as provided in this article, section 2502, or b. In a proper case obtain specific performance or replevy the goods as provided in this article, section 2716. 3. On rightful rejection or justifiable revocation of acceptance a buyer has a security interest in goods in his possession or control for any payments made on their price and any expenses reasonably incurred in their inspection, receipt, transportation, care and custody and may hold such goods and resell them in like manner as an aggrieved seller. Section 2706. Paragraph 2712. Cover. Buyer's Procurement of Substitute Goods 1. After a breach within the preceding section, the buyer may cover by making in good faith and without unreasonable delay any reasonable purchase of or contract to purchase goods in substitution for those due from the seller. 2. The buyer may recover from the seller as damages the difference between the cost of cover and the contract price together with any incidental or consequential damages as hereinafter defined. Section 2715 but less expenses saved in consequence of the seller's breach. 3. Failure of the buyer to effect cover within this section does not bar him from any other remedy. Paragraph 2713. Buyer's damages for non-delivery or repudiation. 1. Subject to the provisions of this article with respect to proof of market price, Section 2723. The measure of damages for non-delivery or repudiation by the seller is the difference between the market price at the time when the buyer learned of the breach and the contract price together with any incidental and consequential damages provided in this article. Section 2715 but less expenses saved in consequence of the seller's breach. 2. Market prices to be determined as of the place for a tender are, in cases of rejection after arrival or revocation of acceptance, as of the place of arrival. Paragraph 2714. Buyer's damages for breach in regard to accepted goods. 
1. Where the buyer has accepted goods and given notification, subsection 3 of section 2607, he may recover as damages for any non-conformity of tender, the loss resulting in the ordinary course of events from the seller's breach as determined in any manner which is reasonable. 2. The measure of damages for breach of warranty is the difference at the time and place of acceptance between the value of the goods accepted and the value they would have had if they had been as warranted, unless special circumstances show proximate damages of a different amount. 3. In a proper case any incidental and consequential damages under the next section may also be recovered. Paragraph 2715 Buyer's Incidental and Consequential Damages 1. Incidental damages resulting from the seller's breach include expenses reasonably incurred in inspection, receipt, transportation and care and custody of goods rightfully rejected, any commercially reasonable charges, expenses or commissions in connection with effecting cover and any other reasonable expense incident to the delay or other breach. 2. Consequential damages resulting from the seller's breach include a. Any loss resulting from general or particular requirements and needs of which the seller at the time of contracting had reason to know and which could not reasonably be prevented by cover or otherwise and b injury to person or property proximately resulting from any breach of warranty